This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. For Earth Week, ITL is examining many of the top climate issues on Americans' minds. Today, we're going to talk about a growing concern around having kids in a world that's facing climate change. I just can't get over the fact, I feel like when I br if I bring a kid into this world, I'm not gonna leave them in a place better than it, they found it. And I think for me, that is the hardest part. Kate Swiggett Craven has seen firsthand how climate change and the lack of natural resources impacts global communities because of her job helping resettle refugees. While she and her husband personally also have other reasons to avoid having kids, a growing number of Americans, like them, say they're not going to have children because of the climate. Environmental concerns and climate change has been a top reason for at least 5% of Americans to remain childless. That's according to data from the Pew Research Center. Beyond the worry that there won't be a habitable planet left for their children to live on thanks to climate change, many Americans also worry having kids is just bad for the planet. That's because it adds another human to the population whose activities will have an impact on their environment and also adds to the impact their parents have on the planet. In fact, some studies suggest having kids is one of the biggest contributors to an individual's carbon footprint. But we're curious, how is that calculated? We asked Kimberly Nicholas, an associate professor and sustainability scientist at Lund University Center for Sustainable Studies, to help us understand with an example. So if you're talking about the carbon footprint of a hamburger, you would include the carbon cost of raising that beef, uh, everything to produce the cow, to transport the burger um, from actually consumption and any waste that gets disposed. And if you're talking about a person, you can include the entire um, emissions entailed by creating a new person. So there have been studies that look at for an individual on average throughout their lifetime. For a baby, it might include diapers and other kinds of consumption as we get older and become perhaps homeowners or um, might fly in planes and drive cars. So basically, the choices we make in parenting and choices made by our children in life as they grow affect our carbon footprints. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? We all have a footprint. But over the past decade, studies have suggested having children and adding to the population of this planet is detrimental to the environment because of how big it makes our footprint. Adding a child to this planet can add up to 9,441 metric tons of CO2 to the environment, according to a pivotal study first published in 2008, which is commonly cited in the research around this subject that's taken place in the last 15 years since, including the work done by Nicholas and our colleagues. Those 9,441 metric tons are equivalent to adding more than 2,100 gas-powered vehicles onto the road for a year or powering nearly 1,200 homes for the same time period. Let's compare that to catching a flight. If I were to get on a plane from here in Washington, DC to say, Paris, France, that travel would increase my carbon footprint by about one metric ton. That's a huge difference and it becomes even more concerning when you think about the fact that most climate studies say travel, especially air and ground, is one of the biggest contributors to individual carbon footprints. So what makes the apparent footprint from having babies so much higher? So individuals, you know, will vary from the average, which is what gets used to make these initial estimates. And if you talk about creating a new person, uh, that impact includes their lifetime emissions and also the emissions of the future generations that they're likely to create. So that's why it added up to be such a big number. According to the footprint thesis, an individual's carbon footprint includes some or all of the emissions of their children and even their children's children. But individual actions can vary greatly. So this so-called double counting of emissions from the generations to come does not account for any possible individual action or lifestyle choice that would offset the emissions from procreation. And studies in the years since original research on the subject have noted that too. There are certain individual actions climate scientists say can make a great impact on individual carbon footprints. Those are reducing flying, driving, and meat consumption. That's where your personal emissions will have the biggest bang for the buck. Now, don't get me wrong. We love kids here on ITL. ITL is for the kids and vice versa. 
okay? I'm pretty sure I'm the favorite uncle and I still want kids. Adding kids to this planet no doubt impacts individual emissions, but Nicholas says it shouldn't be a reason for parental guilt. It is a fundamental right to choose if and when to become a parent or to add a child to your family. But if you're still worried about the impact, experts like Nicholas say to keep in mind that individual choices can offset emissions and reduce the impact on the planet, like choosing to have fewer kids. Nicholas's calculations show having one fewer kid per family can save about 58.6 metric tons of carbon each year in developed countries, about the same impact as taking 13 gas-powered cars off the road for a year. Other lifestyle choices, like raising your kids as vegetarians or teaching them about environmental conservation, must be accounted for. And it matters how and where you raise your kids too. The study I mentioned earlier calculated that under a constant emission scenario, the average emissions added by having a single child ranges from 56 tons in a developing country like Bangladesh to the 9,441 ton figure for the US. Americans in general have one of the highest carbon footprints in the world. Data from Michigan University Center for Sustainable Systems shows that a typical U.S. household's carbon footprint is about 48 metric tons of CO2 a year, the equivalent of putting about 11 gas-powered cars on the road. Nicholas's research confirms this correlation of wealth with carbon footprint. We see both within countries and between countries huge differences in carbon footprints. The top 10% of people globally cause half of household climate pollution. And actually, many of your listeners are probably in that group because to be in that group, you have to earn 38,000 US dollars a year or more. The world is already at a critical juncture and the need for emissions control is more urgent than ever. But that doesn't mean the greater responsibility of climate emissions or any blame for them lies on parents or hopeful parents. So the long-term emissions from having a child are going to outweigh any other individual consumption choice that you make. But I think it's easy to misinterpret what that means because basically what we need to do is cut global emissions in half by 2030. That's in just a few years from now. Thinking about creating a child has very important long-term impacts on the climate, but it isn't going to prevent or hasten this really narrow window that we have to stabilize the climate in tolerable limits for humanity to thrive. So overall, depending on how and where you live, your choice to have or avoid having kids might not affect the climate as much as current blanket calculations suggest. Broader pro-climate actions like more robust recycling, transitioning to clean energy, focusing on reforestation and protecting existing greens can have a big impact on emissions. But individual actions matter too. And experts like Nicholas say even the little things can go a long way. It's also things like voting, supporting climate organizations, and being part of demonstrations, writing and contacting your representatives directly, for example, in the citizen sphere, um, and other actions under investor, role model, and professional. We know what works, and we know what's effective, and we just need more people actually doing those things.